The Film Learn 60K short film competition with over $1,000 in prizes is now on. Head to filmlearn.com to download your entry pack and to enter your short film. Dude, a friend of mine just told me a super juicy secret and I, I gotta tell someone. Hmm, I don't know, dude. Isn't that a breach of confidentiality? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And here we are, we're 36 episodes in and it is the season finale of Film Learning Season 5. And what better way to cap off this season than to answer one of the most requested effects ever on the history of the show. So I'm just going to put up on screen right now just the sheer amount of requests we've had for this specific effect over the past two years. Let me just say, it's been a lot. One even might say... Oh my god. You knew that was coming. So the requests really speak for themselves. Today we are taking on the breach effect from The Flash both season 2 and season 3. Now the breach is a funny thing, it's one of those effects that's gone through a lot of different changes just like Cisco's Vibe Blast. So I just want to get this out of the way right now. This is my take on the breach effect. It's sort of a combination of a couple of different iterations of the breach effect. And while I probably use complicated fluid sims or something crazy like that, I've done it in sort of a more conventional sense because Honestly guys, my 3D skills aren't that great. But having said that, I'm happy with the effect. I'm sure I'll do a remix of it later on when I get a little bit better at fluid sims and whatnot. So of course guys, there is a download pack for this one. And let's see what we're gonna get in that. First off, you're gonna get the breach as a straight on front view going straight down the barrel of the camera. And of course, you're gonna get the more traditional sort of three quarter side view as well. It's more of a profile shot, really. And included in both of those iterations is also a flare that you can comp on there, just in case you don't have optical flares or no light factory. But I do recommend picking up either of those two if you really want a lot of customization on that flare. Now, in order to complete this effect, you obviously have to download the pack I just mentioned, and also you gotta shoot your actor emerging from the portal. Whether or not you do this on a green screen is up to you. I did it on the green screen, mainly because I hate rotoscoping, and I mentioned that in the tutorial itself. But that's it, guys. Download the pack, shoot your actor, and now, let's get to work. Hey guys, before we get into the breach itself, I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into how it came together in Cinema 4D. So what we have here is the untextured animation. It looks pretty complicated, but in reality, it's really not. Firstly, if I turn off these two effectors right here, you can see that our complex animation is essentially a friggin' donut. But add a taper effector that turns our donut into an oval shape, and then we add our Displace Deformer, and damn, that brings it to life a bit, right? Now, Deformers are kind of like the 3D version of Turbulent Displacement. Now, if you'd like to know more about using this kind of stuff in cinema, check out the links below to Grayscale Gorilla and their videos on it. It's really good stuff, but we all know why we came here, so let's composite this breach. So here we are in After Effects, and I've got my comp set up and ready to go. I've also imported our breach animations, and you know, for this shot, I'm going to use the three-quarter or side version. So let's drop that in like so, and then position it into place. Now I'm also going to scale it up to around 159%, because like an idiot, I didn't shoot myself on the green screen in full frame, so I've got to match the breach to my actual size in the frame. So just a word to the wise, frame your shot properly. Now guys, one more step before we move into scaling, and that's anchor points. If we select the anchor point tool here, you can see that our anchor point, this little dot right here, isn't in the center of our breach. Now this is a problem, because when we actually scale down the footage, like so, you can see that our breach portal itself is sort of scaling off center. But if we use the anchor point tool to move it right into the center, like right here, now you can see that when we shrink our breach down, it's actually shrinking from the center of our breach itself. Now from there, move along the timeline a few frames and then I'll hit the stopwatch and just smack that down to zero. Let's then move ahead a few more frames and then we'll bust it up to 100%. We'll then turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer and check out a preview. Not bad, the animation looks pretty solid. Now if you wanna close the bridge back up, and we do, we're gonna simply repeat those steps but reverse them. So let's head forward to where we want to close the bridge, add a keyframe, move forward a few frames once more, and then you guessed it, we're gonna dump that bastard right back down to zero. We now have our breach opening and closing. So let's move on to blending it, shall we? So for starters, I'm gonna pre-compose the breach. There we go. From there, I'm gonna duplicate it twice. Bam, bam. 
From there, we're gonna grab the bottom layer and drag its position right down below the others. And then we'll head up to Effect, Obsolete, and grab a Fast Blur. And naturally, we're gonna blur this bugger big time. We'll then hit T and bust the opacity down to a level that suits your shot. 47% looks pretty good to me. And if we check out a preview, we now have a nice light cast from our breach on the ground. Next step, we're gonna turn off that top layer and we're gonna focus on this second layer. Now, all we need to do here is change the transfer mode to light and color. This gives the outer parts of our breach a more transparent feel as you can actually see through them now and see the background. But it's a little too see-through. So let's turn our top layer back on and from there, gang, we're gonna hit T and adjust the opacity of the top layer till we find a good balance between transparency and totally solid. This is just one you're gonna have to play with, gang, until you find your sweet spot. 60% looks pretty good to me right here. But since we do have transparency going on and our breach is kind of fluid, there should be some displacement on our background footage, right? Yes. You said it, Burnsy. So let's head to our footage layer. And with our footage layer selected, we're gonna head up and add a new adjustment layer. That way it'll just straight on top of it. And from there, we wanna head up Grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask that's a little bit smaller than our actual breach. Mm, that looks pretty good. Believe me guys, it doesn't have to be pretty as it's gonna sit under our breach. Next, let's head up to Effect, Distort and add Turbulent Displace. Now I'm not gonna change the scale or the amount. All I'm gonna do is change it to Bulge Smoother. There we go. And then I'm gonna head down to Evolution, hit the stopwatch, skip ahead to the end of the comp and change it to two. And finally, I'm just gonna trim the layer to start when the breach is full size and then we're gonna just trim it so it ends before the breach actually shrinks back down. That way the warping and displacement only affects the background while the breach is actually on screen in full size. So what's our next step? Well, adding a flare of course. Now guys, I highly recommend grabbing a flare plugin like Optical Flares or No Light Factory purely for the ability to customize the flare to your liking and animate its scale and brightness. But you can use the flare in the download pack that I've made if you like, just like me. So. All I'm gonna do is drop the flare in, change the transfer mode to screen, and move it into place. Okay, our breach is now composited in our shot, but with nothing coming out of it, it's just kinda there, isn't it? Well, fear not, gang, because it's super easy to add your actor to the shot, and why is that? Because the hard work is already done. If we check out this clip from the show, frame by frame, you can see that they used the flare to hide the start of the actor's footage, and they simply fade them into the shot over a couple of frames. It's nothing too challenging at all. In fact, if I scrub along the timeline, you can see that their entire breach animation goes for less than 10 frames. So whether you rotoscope your actor or shoot them on a green screen is entirely up to you because it's such a short shot. But just for the sake of pure convenience, I shot mine on a green screen, mainly because I really, really hate rotoscoping. So what I'm gonna do is drop my actor's footage in below our flare file and then sync it up with the point that our breach is full size and the flare is at its brightest point. We'll then hit T to bring up opacity, crank it down to zero and skip ahead four to five frames and then crank it up to 100%. If we check out a preview, you can now see we have our actor, I don't know, breaching in. Yeah, that doesn't sound weird at all. Now our last step is to add a little light fall off to the scene in the form of an adjustment layer and a little bit of color correction. So let's head up and add one. There we go. From there, we'll grab the pen tool and we're gonna draw a really rough mask centered on our breach and fanning out. We'll then hit F and crank it up to around 100 pixels or even more if you like. Let's then head up to effect, color correction, and I know this has been a reoccurring theme, but we're gonna add photo filter. And from the drop down menu, we'll grab blue, and then we'll crank it up to around 35%. We'll then also head up to color correction again and grab exposure. Now, all we're gonna do here is just increase the gamma correction just a little bit, like a really little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, time to animate the opacity on this layer and then we're done. So of course, let's head to the point where our bridge starts, hit T to bring up opacity, hit the stopwatch and crank it down to zero. We'll then head to the point where it's full size and we'll crank this thing all the way back up to 100. We'll then skip forward a few more frames just before our breach shrinks again and then we'll add another keyframe. There we go. And then we're gonna finish it up by heading to the end of our breach animation right here, maybe one frame afterwards, 
and then we're gonna bust the opacity back down to zero. Now, if we check out our preview, you should have a pretty slick breach animation complete with a light cast on the floor, some sweet light fall off affecting your scene, and of course, your actor coming out of the breach. And that, my friends, is the last episode of season five, done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. So guys, that is the season finale of Film Learning tackling the breach effect from The Flash. Now, as I said, it's not 100% screen accurate, but it's easy to composite and it still looks pretty damn cool in my opinion. So that brings us to the end of season five of Film Learning. It's been 36 episodes of fun and I can't wait to get back into season six. But in the meantime, we are going to have a week next week that is our new Film Learning Masterclass mini series. And this time around, we're going to be tackling YouTube. So this Masterclass series is gonna cover everything from starting your channel all the way up to adding production value and basically anything else that I can spew out of this brain to help you and your channel grow. But guys, for the final time this season, that is my time. If you enjoyed this video and if you enjoy Film Learning in general, why not like and share it? Or if you're new here, why not hit subscribe or check out my Patreon right there? Or there's still time to enter the 60k short film competition, or just check out that film on an episode right up there. Or you can check out my social media crap above my head. There's a Facebook, there's a Twitter, probably poking at the wrong ones. And until season six rolls around, guys, enjoy the masterclass and keep learning.